action, very emotional action. <laughs> um, first of all, a very big thank you to Labour Women's Declaration and to the work that Kerry and her friends team have put into organising tonight and to David for sponsoring this event. And it just strikes a chord with me. I'm the Member of Parliament for Gower. Before, you know, I was a teacher for 20 years. I taught French to, you know, a lot of 11 to 16 year olds, which was definitely a challenge. Um, but I, you know, I've played sport all of my life. I may need to play a bit more now while I hit 50 next week, but I feel very, very passionately about women and girls in sport, particularly now when we look at how many young people are just switching off. Uh, and, and not participating in sport, particularly because of COVID, but before that there's evidence out there that there's not much motivation and it's, it's very, very difficult to engage with people. But we're all gathered in this room and it's a bigger crowd than I expected, but I'm not surprised because we are here and we are all here for a reason. Because when I became a Labour politician, I I had a trans constituent that came to me that asked me about, you know, the Equality Act, how well I knew the Equality Act, and of course, if you knew about 2017, many of us were there by the seat of our pants, and we really genuinely uh, had a lot to learn in a very, very quick, quick, quick time. So I'm here with a genuine reason, because fairness and equality in sport and sex-based rights are something that for the last four years I have picked my way through these conversations, difficult conversations, only a few hours ago with very close Labour friends in, <laughs> in, in close company. We need to be able to talk to each other. We've not got a space within the Labour Party that is safe to speak to each other without fear nor favour. And this is what I want to bring to the Labour Party. I can guarantee you that I have been having these conversations. I actually sit on the PLP committee. I have been bringing this up. I would not be standing here tonight talking to you if I knew there weren't 20 or more Labour MPs behind me supporting me. I'm hoping that Kerry will tell me when I've had my five minutes because I'm, I'm not being very, you know, a you know, speaker. <laughs> but I feel very passionately about this. Just as a secondary school teacher, when I saw that girls were dropping out of sport, not wanting to do it, having issues with body image, not wanting to share a space maybe, uh, you know, with, 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 with the boys. And it is a real, real issue for women and girls in sport and we have got some wonderful sports women that we can look up to and, and we just have to say look Emma Raducanu and Leila Fernandez have done look at that we need to be championing women in sport and everybody has a right to have that space to be an equal in a sporting environment and that's what brings me on to this conversation because I've done a lot of work recently around um, uh, it actually came at me a different way rather than through the, the trans debate and I don't want to call it a trans debate because for me it's a matter of fairness and equality and we have to be able to talk about our concerns and I've got colleagues that have been pilloried and I know and I don't want to go on about Rosie but I just want to tell you that I stand by Rosie Duffield many of us stand with Rosie Duffield But it's speaking out and standing by your colleagues that have literally been bullied because of liking things on Twitter. And it's absolutely, the real world is not Twitter. Politics is not Twitter. The real life. People have concerns, they should be allowed to speak about them and discuss them and work our way through it. And that's when we talk about self-ID in the, in, the, in the Labour Party. We need to work out how that will work and what that means when well, that's juxtaposed against the Equality Act 2010. Because, let's be honest with you, 
does it work? Will it work? Personally, you're right, I don't think it will. But we've got to get to that point and there is no space in the party currently to be able to have that conversation. I want to be the person that facilitates that conversation. But I want to, you know, move on and just say, there, is, there are so many sports bodies, because I've digressed, I'm sorry, it's a terrible habit of mine. Um, there is a report about to come out uh, for trans equality in sport. That has been, I have been chasing that with, with, uh, with, with, with Julian, the, the chair of the DCMS, with Nigel Huddlestone, just trying to get, come on, get it out, let's have it. Let's see what guidance is being given by UK sport for fairness and equality in sport for women. What does it mean? And I'm, I hope that what that will bring to the table, and I'm hoping that what we will get is, is because people are scared. People don't want to have this conversation. And by not having this conversation, that impacts on everybody and participation. So what we need to do now is to have that conversation. Let's see the guidance that UK Sport are going to put out. Let's see what comes forward. Because there is no way, there is no way that it is fair for a male-bodied person to be on a sports pitch with a, a woman in a contact sport. <laughs> I'm, I'm not the expert, but I've spoken to everybody on this panel and I've gone down, you know, I've, d I've done my homework, I've had those conversations. We have got to move forward, look, safety, equality, fairness in sport. Women have a place on a world stage at elite and grassroots level and we deserve to be there and we deserve to be there not to be, have our place taken by anybody else. But I'd just like to say thank you ever so much. Kerry, you've been an absolute star. Everybody here tonight is going to talk in more depth about things but this is something I feel very, very passionately about and remember behind me are other MPs.